Are Christians predestined or do we have free will? This is an excellent question. And let me start off by saying that Christians disagree on the answer to this question. And Christians at Christ Community Church disagree on this question. And elders disagree on this question. I think one of the elders I disagree with is sitting right over here. There he is, yeah. So... uh, So I'm going to give uh, the Mark Ashton response, which is within the bounds of Christ Community Church. But if you want an alternate view, you can talk to Ken Dick later and get a very credible and biblical uh, response to this. Ken Ken doesn't mind if I say that. We disagree on things. Uh, But here's, here's here's a couple of basic thoughts I'll shoot to you. Number one, the concept of predestination is very biblical. If you go to, if you, if you go to Romans, uh, particularly chapters 7, 8, 9, 10, you'll read a lot about predestination. If you go to Ephesians chapter 1 and 2, you'll read a lot about predestination. So I don't think you can ever come to the conclusion that predestination is an unbiblical idea. It's written right there in the text, and you can't avoid it. At the same time, free will is a very biblical idea. <laughs> It's written right there in the text. Every time Jesus says something like, whoever believes in me is assuming that there is free will that's behind that belief. Every time Jesus makes a command like to love your neighbor as yourself, there's an assumption that there's a free will choice that you can uh, obey what Jesus has to say. So free will is written, I would say, all over the Bible, just cover to cover. And predestination can be found as a biblical concept as well. The place where Christians disagree with one another on this issue is not whether they can both be found in the Bible. It's which one is primary in the question of salvation. So the Calvinists would say predestination is primary in the question of salvation. In other words, people were pre-picked by God from the foundation of the world who's going to be saved and who's not going to be saved. And there is nothing that you can do in order to be able to... Be saved or not. Your response is irrelevant. God has already pre-picked who's going to be in and who's going to be out. Okay, So that's the Calvinist view that emphasizes predestination. The Arminian view uh, would emphasize free will, and that is that God freely offers salvation to everybody who will come to him, and you get to choose whether or not you wind up, uh, you get to choose whether or not whether you believe. And your salvation is dependent on whether you believe in Jesus or don't believe in Jesus. But it's a matter of your free will. And God hasn't pre-picked who's going to say yes and who's going to say no. It is authentically a decision of, uh, of the will. So these are Calvinists. These are Arminians that are over here. You find both of them in the scriptures. One of the questions that I ask is... Uh, a question of, are there any verses that you can find in the Bible that have both of them in order? And there's one that I found at the end of Romans chapter 8, I think it's Romans 8, 28, that it says, for God, those he foreknew, he also predestined. And those he predestined, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. And so there's a, an order that begins with foreknowledge, goes through predestination into justification and glorification. So God foreknew from the foundations of the world those people who would choose him, and predestination is a very real response to God's foreknowledge. And I think that's what Romans 8 is, uh, is designed to teach us. Predestination is real, but it's based on the foreknowledge that God has uh, about the world. Now, there are probably three different kinds of foreknowledge positions. Uh, Some people would ask the question, well, if God foreknew it, if God foreknew it, could it have been different? Does that make sense? Like, if God foreknew from the beginning of the timeline everything as it was going to play out, doesn't that mean that it's predestined? I remember one time I had breakfast with Dr. William Lane Craig, who's one of the most brilliant philosophers in our, uh, in our, our era, And I asked him that very question. I said, if God foreknows it, doesn't that mean that it necessarily has to happen? We don't really have free will? And as he poured his syrup on his pancakes, he says, oh no, that's just a flaw in modal logic. (laughs) I said, thank you, that makes it really clear for me. (laughs) The idea is, he was saying that human beings are on a timeline and a mode of thinking that's very linear, but God isn't bound to that. God can be at all places at the same time. God can be at all points on the timeline at the same time. So even asking questions like before or prior are questions that really are mystifying types of questions when you think about how God interacts with space and time because he's beyond space and time and all of that. 
So my answer would be, I think both predestination and free will uh, are biblical, uh, and you'll find free will and foreknowledge as primary in the way that things are taught in the scriptures.